Scattered throughout the community sit a number of old buildings with new incarnations, far removed from the purposes for which they were originally intended. Few can remember how it was they came to be, and fewer yet remember that they once served quite a different purpose at what is known today as the Swift Current Airport. Yet once, long ago, from the years 1941 to 1944, during World War II, it was all so much more than what you see today. Once it was known as the British Royal Air Force Aerodrome. Part of a strategy created by Britain's Royal Air Force to train airmen overseas far away from the probing eyes of the enemy, the BCATP supplied more than 130,000 aircrew to the air forces of the Allied nations. One of those schools, number 39 SFTS, was located in Swift Current, Saskatchewan. Opened in December of 1941, the number 39 Service Flying Training School, or 39 SFTS, as it was known, provided advanced training for pilots, including fighter and bomber training and navigation. 39 SFTS here in Swift Current saw upwards of 1,900 men pass through its program, looking to earn their wings. One of the RAF's own, a young 20-year-old British soldier by the name of Roy Spence, or Ginger as he was known to his friends, was one of the first soldiers to have arrived in Swift Current. Having volunteered for a posting overseas, he thought he was headed to join the war effort in the Middle East. We got on the boat at Liverpool and we took, we were in a big um, convoy and it took 13 days to get to Halifax. So we're wondering, how, what are we going to do? Why are we going to Halifax? There's no war in this country. With their location held secret, so as not to inform the enemy of their intentions. The group of nearly 400 soldiers traveled across Canada for five days by train before reaching their final destination. And then in November 1941, we stopped at this little place. Looked a desolate place, really. And it was in November, really cold, and that was Swift Current, Saskatchewan. Despite the cold, conditions at the camp far exceeded the soldiers' expectations. We were living in camps that were built in the First World War in England. Here it was a brand new camp built for us. And it was, you know, central heated, warm water. We had to shave with cold water in England. This was a real soft camp to be at. Initially, number 39 SFTS was intended to train young airmen from around the Commonwealth to become fighter pilots using the single-engine Harvard aircraft. The school later traded planes with an SFTS in Calgary for twin-engine Oxfords and began training bomber pilots and navigators instead. With no battles raging, assigned to administration work as the adjutant's gopher, Roy, along with nearly 900 full-time personnel that manned the base, soon settled into life in Swift Current. It was a great place to be stationed, really. It was peacetime. You know, there were no bombs dropping on you or anything like that. There was plenty of food, all kinds of food, no rationing, and the people were really very friendly with us. The city of Swift Current, itself with only 5,000 residents, soon began to see the economic benefits inherent in hosting 1,500 fully employed young men. Enjoying their newfound and much welcome prosperity, they encouraged the young men to leave the base during their off time to enjoy the many businesses, cafes, hotels, and theaters that the city had to offer. In thanks for their service, the residents of Swift Current welcomed the young airmen into their community, their homes, and in the case of more than just a few young ladies, into their hearts as well. A fact Roy Spence knew firsthand, having met and married Lucille Keeler, the girl of his dreams at one of the many dances offered both on and off base. There was a lot of social interaction between the guys and the gals. There were three places we used to go to dances, yeah. And we'd go there as often as we could, you see. Get out of the camp, get cleaned up and go and dancing. The airmen also welcomed their new Canadian friends to the base hosting movies, dances, and live theater shows. 
Newly graduated pilots often invited their new friends to celebrate on base with them as they graduated and earned their wings during the all-important wing ceremony. All their friends, you know, pe people that invited them out over the years, they'd all come out, the city come out here and watch these boys proudly get their wings. It was a lovely day, really, and they were very excited. Jubilant with their achievements, the celebrations would often spill into the city, namely at the Lyric Theatre, where the squadron's group captain would attempt to contain their celebrations to the basement. But they needed the celebration. They were just boys, you know. Yeah, we were all just boys. There were also tragedies at number 39 SFTS. Training accidents resulting in the deaths of 17 airmen who would never again return home, nor earn their coveted wings. Boys, young and far from home, who will forever remain a part of the fabric of Swift Current. As the war drew to a close, change was on the horizon for those stationed in Swift Current. In April of 1944, number 39 SFTS Aerodrome was forever closed, handed over to the Royal Canadian Air Force Holding Unit until such time as the assets of the base could be disposed of. Planes were sold and buildings were either broken down for their parts or moved into the city where they could once again be put to good use. Out of my kitchen window, across the creek, there's one of our Air Force buildings there and it's the community hall. But people don't know about that, you see. They know it's the community hall, but they figured men with nails and hammers and built it there, but it came from here to there. It was a good deal. They're buying it from the government, and the government wanted to get rid of it, and it's been a real good thing for the community. After the base closed, the men were reposted for the remainder of the war. When peacetime resumed, the majority of British men who married Swift Current girls during their time here took their new wives back to England. A few RAF men, like Roy Spence and his bride Lucille, returned to Swift Current a few years later to enjoy post-war opportunities, raise their families, and help keep their memory of the aerodrome alive. Memories which they believe are important enough to share. I'm not sure how important it is to me. I feel it's important to them that they should know. It's a part of their history. That's how I feel about that. You know, I have a duty to do this, but my duty is not to me. My duty is to the people of Swift Current. At the Swift Current Airport today, there's little left to remind you of the once active RAF aerodrome. While watching the current activity of both recreational and commercial flights as they take off and land, it's hard to visualize the buildings now scattered throughout the city. Few know just how important it all once was, both as the community's contribution to the effort of World War II and to the continued growth and prosperity of the city of Swift Current, which was struggling to find its way out of the Great Depression. The aerodrome may be gone, but its history is not forgotten.